to the National Churchill Museum here at Westminster College. Um, and I want to welcome you so much for, for joining us for this auspicious occasion. And I want to welcome Jim Hans, um, class of 66, as we celebrate the connection between Winston Churchill and Westminster College. And of course, celebrate here in the Sinners of Peace Room um, at the National Churchill Museum. I want to acknowledge several of our museum and archival partners. Um, Shelley Couteau is here from the Secretary of State's office. She's a, the um, uh, museum's archivist, uh, state archivist, and a, uh, a true partner. We do a lot of things together, um, particularly with our archives and papers. And, and uh, Clay um, Bowski, who's here from the Truman Library, Presidential Library and uh, Museum. Thank you so much for coming. Um, I would also like to acknowledge Victor and Pamela Pasley. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I lost you. I lost you. Yeah. Um, uh, for coming. Um, they very generously may, uh, have supported the college uh, in honor of um, Victor's mother and, um, uh, and made a donation to the Centers for Peace Room. And of course, I would be remiss also if I did not introduce our two Churchill Fellows who are here. Um, Suzanne Richardson, who's a Churchill Fellow on the Board of Governors and the Board of Trustees, and Bob Defer, who is a Churchill Fellow, and he chairs the Collections Committee for the museum and um, uh, is going to be the person who's going to be asking us all the time about this wonderful painting. <laughs> so thank you so much for coming. I introduce Carol and Carrie, Dean of Faculty. Well, thank you all for being here. This is a very, very special day. Next week, many of our students will return home for a homecoming of sorts after a semester away. And many of us will also experience a homecoming um, as we gather together with family and friends for Christmas. But today, we're celebrating a very special homecoming right here on our campus. And it's an exciting event. It's a rare occasion that such a special treasure as the one we celebrate today will return home after 68 years, not to mention a treasure with such a rich history. When Sir Winston Churchill came to Westminster to develop his historic Iron Curtain Address on March 5, 1946, because of his own passion for painting, he requested instead of an honorarium that he be given a painting of Thomas Hart Benton. President Harry Truman, who was introducing Churchill for the speech, was friends with Benton and arranged for a Benton painting to come to the college to present to Churchill. This nine by 12-inch portrait of a Missouri farmer mending a white picket fence is entitled The New Fence. Over the years, the whereabouts of the painting became a mystery. We now know that at some point, Churchill gave the painting to a family member or friend, and it was sold at a London auction in the 1960s. The painting was purchased by Bernard Bloch, who in turn sold it to a private collector in New York. In 1989, Barnett Bank purchased the painting which was acquired by Nations Bank in 1977 before becoming part of the Bank of America legacy. Fortunately for Westminster, the painting ended up in the office of our alumnus, Jim Hans. When Jim retired from the company, he purchased the painting and decided it should return to the campus where it originally was given to Churchill 68 years ago. So today, we have gathered to see the exciting event take place. Now, Dr. Jim Williams, who is our incoming executive director of the National Churchill Museum, really wanted to be here today. But in his absence, he said in a few comments. He says, the Benton painting is such a wonderful gift to Westminster College. Since the uncovering of the little known part of Churchill's visit to Westminster in my own research, that he specifically requested a Benton painting in lieu of payment for delivering his green lecture, I have been trying to track down that painting I am thrilled that the mystery is at last solved and that the painting is returning home to Fulton where everyone can view it at our National Churchill Museum. So on behalf of all of us here at Westminster and the National Churchill Museum, I want to thank Jim, his wife Beverly, and the Bank of America for this remarkable gift. Before we unveil the painting, I do want to call our special guest uh, forward, but to say first a few words about Jim Hans. <coughs> Jim Hans is from Osterville, Massachusetts. He's a member of the Westminster class of 1966. While at Westminster, he was a member of the Skulls of Seven, a member of Delta Tau Delta chapter of the Sigma Chi fraternity as well. 
From 1988 to, 19, to 2004, he was the Chief Financial Officer and Vice Chairman of the Bank of America Corporation. Today, he is General Partner, Operating Executive, and Director of the Carlisle Group, LP. In 1993, Jim was awarded Westminster's Alumni Achievement Award, and then he returned in 2001 to deliver our IBM lecture and was given an honorary degree by the college. We are so pleased to have him back on campus today and so very appreciative of his generosity. So before we unveil the painting, I'd like to call Jim forward to say a few words to us. Thank you, Jim. Your kind comments. I come about every 15 years, so I notice that. <laughs> the, uh, but I'm delighted to be here today, and thank you all for coming. And, and with a great connection to the Churchill Memorial and Westminster College, I appreciate it very much. I didn't give Barney much notice. Uh, I literally just acquired this painting like two weeks ago, and I've been fooling around trying to get it. It was in my office for years, as, as Carolyn said. Uh, once I, I, I love Thomas Hart Benton, and. And we bought, and you'll know, you'll know this, Pia, we bought the Boatman's Bank in St. Louis in the mid-90s. And the Boatman's Bank had three huge Thomas Hart Benton murals that are probably bigger than this wall. They couldn't afford to insure them, so they didn't have them on display, <laughs> right? And they had them in their bank vault. And we stumbled across them when we, uh, when we bought the Boatman's Bank, and we ended up giving them to the St. Louis Art Museum. So they're in the St. Louis Art Museum today, and you can go in and see them. But the colors and everything just sort of jump off the page of a Thomas Hart Bennett painting. So when we bought the Barnett Bank in Jacksonville, I was going back and forth to Jacksonville quite a bit. And, and banks have great art collections, right? They spent, you know, they used to make money, right, years ago. And so they used to buy a lot of art. And, uh, and, and this one was sitting on one of the walls in one of the officers' uh, uh, offices down there, and I thought, wow, that, that's a Thomas Hart Benton painting. So I immediately snatched it, took it under my arm, and took it back to my office, right? <laughs> and then I figured out the connection. I read the back of it and figured out there was a great connection. So I hung on to it all those years in my office. When I retired, I thought, well, I'll just sort of take it home. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody looks for it for all those years. Nobody really knows about it. And, uh, and so I was, I was, they, were moving, they were moving me from one floor to another upon retirement, and the painting disappeared. And so I, so I, I called them and I said, so where did you take this painting? And they said, well, we discovered that's a very nice painting. So we decided we were going to put it into our traveling exhibit. And they moved it around from kind of city to city with the rest of the Bank of America paintings. And there's lots of them. Uh, because if all the banks we bought, we collect a lot of stuff. And, uh, and so it's been sort of floating around. So I started trying to buy it a year ago. And, and I don't know if you've ever dealt with the bank, but it's a serious bureaucracy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so it was like, oh, I don't know. I've got to talk to this person or this person. And then about spring, a year, about last spring, I guess, they said, well, maybe we'll just get it appraised and figure out what it's worth and sort of go down this path. And I, I kept telling them, you know, it really belongs at Westminster. It just belongs in the Church Memorial. That's where it started. It's a 70-year round trip in 68. Actually, the painting was painted in, in uh, and I guess, 45, a year earlier. So it's almost a 70-year round trip, in a way. Uh, and so they thought, oh, okay. So we, so we fooled around with stuff to be like all summer with the praise. And they're still not quite done uh, and with appraisals. And they finally decided, okay. If you give us a check for this, we'll give you the painting, and you give it to the college. I said, great. So I did that, and so they, before they changed their mind, I decided I'd better get down here. <laughs> so I called Barney and said, okay, I'm coming. And, uh, and so here it is, and it is a great painting. I love the painting. Your replica looks pretty good, but it's not quite as bright as the, uh, as the original one. Uh, the, tra the history of it's a little tricky. I mean, we tried to track down the history a couple of times, Carolyn, and, and God, what you just said. I mean, that's about, but there's a lot of gaps in there. I do know that it was in the bank world from 80, from 89 forward. So, what, 20 some odd years it's been in the bank world. Uh, and, and so that's where it's sort of been. It has not been restored or anything, and nor did I throw anything on it, you know, bringing it out here or anything else. So why don't we show this? 
Yeah, just right. from the world what this looks like. Thank you so much and enjoy the day. Yeah.